Hey, Staten Island. This is Health Wish, a conversation about the state of healthcare in the fabulous fifth borough. Our aim is to raise issues, raise awareness, and raise health. Because when we raise health, we raise everyone. Welcome to Health Wish. I'm your host, Jamie Lynn Holman. Today we're here at Rabs Country Lanes, one of Staten Island's long-standing icons. I'll be speaking to owner Frank Wilkinson, who's making sure that all Staten Islanders have access to breast health education, screenings, and support through the Breast Health Navigation Program at Staten Island University Hospital. I'm Jamie Lynn Holman, and this is Health Wish. Let's head inside. run business, Rabs has close ties to the community. When Rab Wilkinson passed away in 2008, his son Frank took on a full-time job of leading the organization, which included continuing his father's charitable work through their nonprofit, the Rab Wilkinson Foundation. So first and foremost, Frank, tell me how you've been doing. How's the business? How are you? Frankie's good. We're open. We got people coming through the doors. Well, it's so great. <laughs> and you can you can hear all the, the people bowling behind yes. us. And so you're up and running, which is really wonderful. And we know that you have Rab's Country Lanes, but you also run the Rab Wilkinson Foundation. So tell me a little bit about that. What's their mission and what you do with that? Yeah, so the Rab Wilkinson Foundation, named in honor of my dad, uh, was started after it passed. And to honor his legacy, and the work that we do collectively in our community. And so the mission is certainly revolves around improving people's lives. And a lot of focus on education, while we also, under this umbrella of other things that we do, we've pulled in our largest fundraiser, our Bowling Against Breast Cancer campaign, underneath the umbrella of the foundation, which was something that was near and dear to his heart, as well as ours and our, and our family and our community. So it's a great opportunity for not only our family to give back, but through this amazing outlet of the community built here in Rab's Country Lanes to give back to our community and to, to continue honoring the legacy that he left behind. And so you talk about our community and what led you to give to Staten Island University Hospital? You know, you give donations and you support organizations that you have an affinity to. And that's how you get your our community around us to also support. So Staten Island University Hospital is in our back door. And I will tell you, our relationship goes back many, many years. When we were looking to hang our flag on something that goes along with this campaign, you know, you guys had no problem letting us know where we can hang that flag and supporting <laughs> supporting programs that mean so much, not just, hey, it's wonderful to make a donation and get a plaque on the wall or a letter in the mail, uh, but no, and you can truly support a program that is needed in our community. So it's very easy for us to support the program like the Breast Health Navigation Program, and it's something that fits the mission of what we do with our annual campaign. And I know that you have your annual Bolathon, which in the last 17 years, you've raised over $670,000 with it, I believe. We have. That's incredible. Did you ever think that was possible? No, and I, I don't take any credit because we have an amazing team. And so 17, actually 18 years ago, the campaign started and the, the Bolathon would, would have been in its 17th year. A couple ladies, uh, Nazareth Larson, our center manager, and, and Liz Dehart, and were sitting together and with the other ladies and saying, hey, we need to do something. They were directly affected by this. And how do we step up and make some contributions to our community in, in honor? And it blossomed from there, you know, raised a few thousand dollars the first couple years. Years. And then we eclipsed this $50,000 mark uh, within the last 10, and then we finally did it again. And knowing that the event is not just an event, it's a month long camp, it's a couple month long campaign it's grown into. But our job is not only to raise money, but raise awareness and education for what it is that we're doing. It's great to just raise money for breast cancer funding and local projects, but without the education outreach, that to us is so much more. But no, $670,000 uh, is, it, first of all, wasn't easy. When we eclipsed the half million dollar mark, we were totally stoked. And now we're already on the road to a million. And that is a goal. So tell me about the fundraising effort that you have going right now. I hear somebody's hair might be changing colors. <laughs> uh, yeah, about that. So last year, the staff came to me and said, hey, we want you to dye your hair pink for the Bolathon. And I looked at them, and this was the week of the Bolathon. And I looked at them, and I looked at them, and I laughed. No, no, we're serious. And all of a sudden, this little envelope of cash showed up. And it was like, for 50 bucks, I'm not dyeing my hair pink. Not happening. However, for a sizable donation and collection, I will do it. They gave up on me. 
They were like, yeah, the bolt-on's coming, all right, forget it. So, a week or two ago, it came up again. All right, you said you would do it. And I did say, I did say last year that I would do it if they reached an amount, but I never gave them the amount because I wanted them to strive high. And uh, all of a sudden I got some other money and it's now becoming a little bit more real. So I have a goal in mind. Uh, I would love to say it's $50,000 so that we yes. raise all the money that <laughs> we, we would have raised this year. It's not that. I would love for it to be. Uh, but the staff is energized and they are... They can't wait to see it happen. I can't wait either. I cannot wait to see your hair. Yeah, and you're all supposed to be my friends. <laughs> sure, I'll give you money. Go dye your hair. Go torture yourself. And so I even made the commitment that I will do it fully. I've not no no spray, no gel. Well, I love it. I think it's going to look really good on you. It'll go very well with your whole promotions, everything you raise money for as well. Yeah, I'm just thinking about that first business interaction that I have with someone. They look at you like they can't. <laughs> You have an explanation. You're doing wonderful things with it, so they'll know exactly what's going on. Yes, yeah, so when someone shows up to Rab's Country Lanes and they say they have a meeting with Frank, there's going to be a bucket outside the door before I come out. I love it. And you cannot see me until you've deposited <laughs> perfect, something in the bucket. Perfect. You know, listen, it's all in fun. Uh, I'm up for bets and challenges, always for that. I'm not willing to do something that I... I wouldn't ask someone else to do. Well, you're definitely a prankster, too. You find creative ways to friend raise, so that's why yes. I want to talk about your pink flamingos yes. that have made an appearance on people's lawns. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> what so, is that about? You know when you have an you know Jamie when you have an idea and it just somebody says, "Hey, we should do this." But then it always falls in your lap like you should just say, "Let's do this." Well, Nazareth says, "Hey, I saw this idea somewhere and we should do this." All right. So I you know, do a little Google search and find and I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. Okay. So this group in New Jersey was out dropping flamingos on front lawns to raise money for their cause. And it fits perfectly with what we do. So I go online I, and I wind up buying these flamingos. They come in, I've got a box inside. I reach out to my sign vendor, we make some signs. And now they sit, they sit here. Well, now what are you going to do? <laughs> they have to, we actually have to go make this happen. And we have some amazing volunteers. But the idea goes back to the awareness and the education. And we could easily just drop flamingos and stuff on people's lawn to ask for a donation or drop a letter. But there's this symbol. It's a symbol of hope. It's a symbol that uh, there is people, one, that care. Because this is it's a chain letter. So you certainly could send it to whomever you want. And you make a donation and you expect them to make a donation. In some cases, they don't. Or, hey, I'm not available. I can't really do that. But hey, go pass this to someone else. And a lot of times it's... I'm going to pass to someone who could use a smile. It's exciting because people see it. The sign on the lawn says, you've been flocked. It's got our website. It talks about the foundation. And that's what we want. We want people to see it and know that uh, there's hope and some excitement happening around you. And 400 flamingos that make their way around the islands in a two-month span that raise a hell of a lot of money. And I think I just get a kick out of I get a kick out of a few things, but when Stacy shows up with checks and Liz shows up with checks and goes, all right, this is what we did today. It's so cool to see that people embrace it and are excited. And then when you get pictures from people, look at my front lawn, I'm thinking of you today. And it's now become a staple of the campaign. And that it's just, it's fun. Well, it's, it's cool. definitely what we're trying to do, right? Is, is raise awareness and get the word out there. And you're impact. definitely making an impact. And speaking of impacts, last year, the Rab Wilkinson Foundation Breast Health Navigation Program was able to guide 300 women through breast health navigation, through Staten Island University Hospital. Hello. 300 perfect women. game. And that's in a perfect game. That's right. And in addition to that, thousands of people across Staten Island were able to access screenings and education. What does that mean to you? The more we can touch through these programs, the better. And, and that's, that's fantastic. It, it's something that when we go back to our donors and say, you did this, the foundation didn't do this, you did this uh, as a result of the work that we do together. And that means, that means so much more to us than anything else. So I'm glad that the program is able to stay and be able to serve as many people as possible uh, through the means of the program. So kudos kudos to you guys for making that happen but you know what it's that's the touchy-feely part about making a donation it's just not a blind hey I'm gonna write a check and send it for a capital campaign uh, no this is real there's something that people can relate to and can reach out to the hospital for those services that they may need or the under to your point the underserved community that truly needs it that may not realize they need it, right? And I, that's what you want. And so, yeah, that, that gives us the goosebumps and the tingly feelings inside. Well, we're really so grateful to you, to the foundation, and to all the people you inspire to help you along the way. Well, thank you. You are an inspiration. <laughs>
Healthwish wishes to thank Mr. Frank Wilkinson and the Rad Wilkinson Foundation. You can support the Foundation's effort to raise awareness about breast cancer by visiting their website at www.rabsway.org. Thank you for watching Healthwish. We hope to see you again soon.